However, there's been a bit of a saga in this period. So, let me regale you with what's just happened, because we've just been absolutely mugged off by someone's agent. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Bolton. If you're still enjoying the series, drop a like. That'd be most fantastic. Really does help out with that YouTube algorithm nonsense. So I thought we'd start today on the Club Vision. You know, my favourite pages. You know how much I love the Club Vision page. So... Here's how they can rate us tactically so far. Now, give in mind, this is a C+. I, I don't know how it's a C+, considering there's only two negatives, but sure, whatever. They're pleased with the formation, entertaining, positive, good stuff. They like our pressing. They like our defending. They like they don't, They don't. like the fact that it's a high quality level of passing, but they hate the fact that we're not playing direct, even though we're winning matches, whatever. They can screw themselves. This is the one that does get my goat up, though. Unhappy that so few goals have been scored. We are the second highest scoring team in the league. Joint second, albeit, but we also have played a game fewer than the teams around us. What? What? Like, what? How, what? how many goals do we need to score for them to be happy at this point? We're literally one of the highest scoring teams in the league. I don't know. The, the board, truly at the lake house, this will show forever. I reckon we could score 100 goals a season and they'd probably still be like, yeah, but it wasn't 101 now, was it? Given your cross-series success with Booty, have you ever considered trying to get in touch with him? So, I have considered it. And I'm thinking about it even more now. So I'm putting this out there to you guys. Do you think it would be... Uh, and actually, would you like to see if I could potentially sort something out, like an interview with Regan Booty on the channel as like a separate video, if we could sort somehow sort something like that out with Regan? Obviously, he'd have to be up for it. Um, I don't know if he would be. I don't know if he's even aware of the sort of godlike status he's taken on over this channel. I'm sure that must be quite strange for him if he is aware of it. So if you think that's a good idea, let me know and I'll try and sort something out. But I... I, I get the feeling it probably may not happen but you never know might be a huge christmas surprise so yeah let me know your thoughts on that one so today we've got uh fa cup 14th place in the championship currently our bristol city this feels like one of these games where maybe if we put out a strong team and bearing in mind we've not had a big rest there's a chance that we could get something from this game and that would be kind of cool because money potential chance for a big draw in the next round where even more money it's quite important even for a team in league one like us right now given our financial situation very important like, if we could somehow win, we would get £135,000, which is no mean feat. So, Isgrove, of course, knackered. Um, oh, well, this is going to take a second. Right, so first change everything around, as per. Delfonso through the middle. Surely Rodo Richards is available again. Yes, he is. Politic, I think that's a reasonable chance. As much as Pert Harris has underperformed last season when he's played here, I've actually found him to be very profitable in the Mets' salary role this season. I don't know what it is. Maybe he's just got better, but he seems to be doing okay. I've really not been very impressed with Xavi, Xavier Simons this season, but again, it could be because of roles, all sorts of factors. There's going to be no chance of anyone like Kyoso in the libero role. I don't think so. Um, it might, and it, honestly, it feels like today might be the day for a Labuti, a Liberuti, a Libuti, Libuti. Let's go with Labuti. Unfortunately, other players I'd like to bring in are all still uh, not fit yet, and Fleming's not quite there yet, but my God. I feel like we'll be a lot better when we get Fleming back. He could honestly be the difference between us getting a playoff spot and an automatic promotion, honestly. And I prefer to play Portis out wide, but he's so good in both positions. This is quite a good team, actually. Look, Naki Wells, Junior Stanislav, Antoine Semenyo. All they're missing is Fran Sullivan. And, oh, no, no. I refuse to admit that they've got Mengi. This is bad. He better not do well against us. He will, won't he? He's bloody great. I don't know how well our chances are of actually doing that, but were we to beat Bristol City, there's a real chance that we could get ourselves a great draw for the next round. Either maybe play another team that's beatable and go to the fifth round, or get some massive Premier League team where we could maybe play them at home, get loads of gate receipts, stuff like that that would really be important to us in our financial strife. But we need the libero booty performance of the year out of him today, and I don't know if he's going to be able to do that for us. Jones, no, out to politic. Simple one-touch stuff here. Not around the side for side. Oh, he's got into the box, potentially. They've kind of shepherded him quite nicely. It's Porteous! Oh, he got into a good position. Here's the overlap, though. It's Maskell. Tons of options in the box. Can he find the right one, though? Politic blazes it over the crossbar. So far, though, we look pretty good here. Putting a bit of pressure on Bristol City at the back here. Oh, they've got to get out of this here. And they might not do. And, oh, they actually broke through the press. Right, oh, no. Booty's got caught under it. Naki Wells is in. And this is the level of finishing. But Zegers, they're huge. The press nearly caught them out, but they ended up, yeah, benefiting from it. That's the level of quality that they have that we just don't quite possess yet. But our qualities are in different areas. We love more than them. We share more than them. And that's the true quality. It's Christmas. Jones, oh, if he could roll this, he might have to go for himself and he's... Oh, side netting. There was options in the middle. And when it opened up for him, I thought that was his moment. Half time, Bolton Wanderers nil, Bristol City nil. Only one shot on target apiece, but we're still managing to play our game. And I'm interested. 
more of this in the second half and the charts will come. The question is to who it will fall. Um, Regan Booty as well is doing a pretty all right job at playing the libero role today. Politic down this right-hand side. Men making their way into the box. He's gone past a couple. Options opening up for him. Jones! Simons! Oh, and Pert Harris, and that was a great chance. Lovely build up there. Opened up a huge gap for Xavi Simons, but he was unable to finish it, unfortunately. And that, oh dear. <laughs> way, to, way to go, Dennis. Way to go. Pert Harris, if we're going to win or lose, it has to be today. Politic, if he gets a good foot. Oh, what a lovely touch for Geffen Jones. Great save from Bentley. Lovely vision there from Politic to knock that back inside to his wing back. That was great play. And we're looking better in the second half. The chances we're creating seem to be of higher caliber. Booty's delivery, that's a poor cross. Portius. Out wide for Jones, though. Playing as an actual wing back for a minute there. But that allows the run to be made inside here. Simons, round the side for Dennis Politic! Oh my goodness, Rodel Richards, what a chance that was for 1-0. We should be in front here. I have a horrible feeling we're going to draw 0-0 in this game. Uh, just like we have in the last two FA Cup matches, Politic. Richards! Oh, good lord, Rodel, how did you miss that one? Just do not let them score from this. There's a guy marked at the back post. There's a guy marked at the back post, and thank God. No, Richards. What? He oh, he's got two players on him. This is... They've thrown a lot more players forward than I expected. Valerie, no! Oh, Ziga with an enormous stop that could well have lost us the match if we didn't make that save. That's a frustrating one. I still think we were pretty good on the night and probably would have been good value for the win, but it didn't come, and now we have to play a replay. Ziga was great. Booty as well. Brilliant. Maybe we'll have a bigger, stronger side of the back line for next game. I don't know. Right, some games off camera. I think this game might be in there. It might not. We'll have to see. I think we're coming back for Shrewsbury next. I think. Right then. We're back. And uh, yeah, we got a little bit mugged off, unfortunately. Away at Fleetwood Town. They got the ball out of this left-hand side. A lovely ball to the back post eventually. And it's an easy header for Paddy Madden. But this was one of these games that we've got to be winning. Considering some of our performances lately, this is one of those ones where you just, you have to win and you can't afford to concede chances like that. And we just didn't. And sometimes we just have a habit of doing this a little bit too much. But I still think eventually we may even out to something decent because we have had a few games where we performed poorly and actually won. And this was not even an example of that. This was just pure brilliance. Delfonso with the ball around the side. Politic is there. Shot rebound. Back to Guy Porteous. 1-0 Bolton at Portman Road. Massive game at the top of the league. And we were able to come out on top here. Then in the second half, Booty with a lovely cross. Porteous gets on the end of that one as well. Ninth goal of the season for him. 2-0. And then later on, there was still time for a little bit more. Booty gets the ball out on this left-hand side here. His second assist of the night coming up right now. Slips it to the back post. And there was Bryce Hosanna. First goal, 3-0 Bolton Wanderers. Massive performance from us. Ipswich were quite poor. Actually, they, they kind of matched us for a lot of the game. Up until we got that second goal. Uh, I don't know why it's not included the third goal on here. But up until we got the second goal, it was a fairly evenly matched game. But after that, we just took over. And uh, I think it's because they started to press forward a little bit more. But we were brilliant. Unfortunately, much as I suspected would happen in a replay against Bristol City, they were just much better than us. They turned up in this game. 1-0 after just seven minutes, we were already a goal down to Carvalho. And it didn't get much better from there on. Stanislas with the ball in. This time it was Jenkins at the back post for 2-0. Then a penalty in the second half from Whiteman made it 3. And then even worse, 70 minutes in, Yankusha just drives past our defenders. We were much tireder in this game. Ball whipped across. Carvalho drill, drill? drills it home for 4-0. At the very least, we were able to get a goal. Zidane Iqbal picking it up in the midfield. Eventually, a lovely ball around the side for Richards, who smashes that one home for 4-1. But that was us out of the FA Cup. If we had gone through, we'd have played Hull City. So, again, it would have been a tough one for us. But unfortunately, we go out. And deservedly so. They were very good. But unfortunately, all the effort we'd expended in that game meant we had an extremely rotated team for the game against Blackpool. A bit of a mess in the box there gave Blackpool the lead after 21 minutes at the University of Bolton Stadium. And it didn't get any better as not that long after that, they get the ball out on the right hand side here with Howe. Um, not the best defending really. Ends up with Hamilton crypt into the box. And there's a load of players just not really doing their jobs properly. And Kai Kai makes it 2-0 to Blackpool. I'd say a fairly uh, fair result in this one. Blackpool were very good and we weren't. But we did at least turn in a much better performance in the next game against Oxford. But unfortunately, it wasn't enough. Seddon getting the ball out. Whips it across Gwargis with a brilliant strike. We've looked at him a few times as a potential signing. Uh, never came off. 1-0 to Oxford United. But we did at least manage to grab ourselves an equaliser. 87th minute, this one. Sarsovic with an absolutely gorgeous effort into the top corner. Side-footed. 1-1. But it's one of those games that, again, I feel like we should have been winning. Our performances seem to rubber band quite a lot due to the fitness level. So we'll be good, and then we'll be bad. And then we'll be good, and then we'll be bad. But we're not often lately in this little spell we're not winning when we're playing well and that's a problem and then it was time to rubber band back to being bad 78th minute on the clock bailey cargo completely unmarked we did go down to 10 men in this game as uh Pert harris had to be substituted with an injury in this one and unfortunately chelsea have recalled him from his loan um but they didn't do it immediately which is what weirded me out they they, they didn't recall him straight away to give me a chance to find a replacement they waited really late and as a result i wasn't able to find anybody but we were kind of crap in this game but then our kind of poor performances continued but not before zach clough scored this absolute screamer first goal 
well, for a while for him, 1-0 Bolton after five minutes. Booty with the assist, but we could not quite hang on. And unfortunately, Bristol Rovers got a very deserved equaliser. Booty missing the ball in the box there. And Westbrook was able to slide that one home for 1-1. It was another back-to-back -back poor performance. And what I would say is as well, that was four straight league home games, which we've not managed to get a win. I think it's one defeat and three draws. Right when we had a chance to sort of capitalise on other teams struggling, we sort of to struggle too. And I think it's for the same reasons. Just we don't have it. We had so many games in such a tight period. It was two or sometimes even three games a week for what feels like forever. We are finally starting to flatten out now, so maybe there's a chance. As all of that leaves us fifth in the league, but you'll notice we're only five points behind now Lincoln City, who are up into second spot, and the game in hand. So we could still go to within two points if we win our game in hand. So it isn't really the end of the world, but it does make you wonder what if. If we'd managed to win a few of those matches in that little period where we were getting some of those fixtures back. Maybe we'd just be that little bit closer and maybe could have even snuck into second spot. We were going to be doing Shrewsbury today, but the match was postponed due to a waterlogged pitch. So we've had an even longer rest and that allows us to come into today away at 22nd place Plymouth. Hopefully we can play a slightly stronger side after everyone's had a rest and get ourselves back onto winning ways. However, there's been a bit of a saga in this period. So let me regale you with what's just happened because we've just been absolutely mugged off by someone's agent. So about midway through the transfer window, I got a bid for Nathan Delfonso. It's £250,000 rising to two seventy five. dollars Now he's 30 on a lot of money and his contract expires in the summer. And I was thinking about maybe not renewing it because it would give us extra cash to spend elsewhere. And I do want to start youngening the team up slightly. So I thought, okay. But then I noticed that it said, my client will become unsettled if you don't allow him to speak to Coventry City, hilariously. So I thought, you know what? Screw it. Well, let's actually do this deal. We're not going to get any more money from him than this. The club needs money. Let's go ahead and do it. So far, so good. Then his agent comes to me on a side notification essentially and says oh my client wants you to pay him in order to join coventry i'm like hang on a minute didn't he say he'd become unsettled if we didn't let him join coventry and now he wants me to pay him to join coventry i don't think that nathan delfonso has been involved in this at all and i think his agent has just been screwing us the entire time so yeah note to self don't sign players that are with this guy in any future uh transfer agreements because he's a bit of a bell end but needless to say delfonso has gone so that has weakened us as well but i felt like we were never going to get that amount of money for him again and right now we have to make more we have to do more selling than I normally do in these saves because we cannot afford for the club to keep slipping too far into debt because God knows what this board will do if we do. The big downside is that we've lost Miles Per Harris uh, due to his injury and then Chelsea recalling him. Uh, I did try to get him back because it wasn't a super long injury either, but they were having none of it, unfortunately. Also, Xavier Simons did leave because his loan finished and then he refused to come back. I gave it a day and then he did come back. So Xavier Simons is back, but Per Harris would not. He just turned down the loan deal. Because it was the only thing I could really do was to try to get him back on loan after they'd recalled him. Because his injury seemed to be all right at that point. And I think it was due to the fact that it was a short-term deal, but they wouldn't let us have him back. But it did say Chelsea recalled him. So, hmm. So, we should be able to put out a slightly more uh, strong squad here with Richards up front. Portius I'm going to put out on the right-hand side with Clough through the middle. Simons and... Obviously, he's not got a number just yet because he's only just returned. Simons and Sarsovic. Booty... Actually, Booty's probably fit enough to start instead of Simons because I like this lineup here. This, for me, is our strongest possible team, really, with Richards, Clough, Porteous, Booty, Sarsovic, Jones, Fleming, as well, for Mayweather, RCN, and Cundy. This is a team that can win matches in this league very comfortably, I feel like, and it'd be nice if we could consistently get this team out there. And with a nice bench as well, with Hosanna, Delaney, Simons, Isgrove, Cissé, who's played a few matches as well, Politic, and Doyle. Cissé's done okay. Like, not fantastically well, but he's definitely forging a path into the team for us. And this is our chance to get back going again, because we've been on a poor run lately, Without a win in four league games, which might be our longest run, actually, of the entire save. Also, they were all at home, which is, I think, the real disappointment for me, was not winning those games where we had a chance to really slide ourselves into a comfortable second position and give a little run at the uh, automatics. But you never know. We're still not out of the woods yet as far as automatics go. We're still right in that race. Portsmouth are the only team that really look pretty comfortably going up at the moment. So if you can put the right run together, you never know. And at the end of the day, if we had to get if we get into the playoffs this year, I would be ecstatic with that, regardless of whether we went up or not, because there's some good teams in here. And we'll have to see. Oh God, Cooper's in a ton of space for Plymouth. And he has given them the lead after three minutes. George Cooper makes it one now. Okay, we are on a bit of a downward spiral at the moment. The morale's starting to slip a little bit in the squad. We have weakened it. Um, I don't think we have much of a choice in a lot of those areas, really. I did look at some loan signings, but there wasn't just anything available. Chelsea weren't as like up for giving us loan players on free. So, uh, that's the problem. Clough now driving through the middle. He might just go for goal here. Finds Porteous. It's a tough angle. And he's gone for it. And a good stop by the goalkeeper as Richards picks it up. Oh my goodness, what a ball. 
Oh, that was a very good pass, and that very nearly was 2-0 to Plymouth Argyle. We're really struggling to control the ball. Normally, we get a lot of possession, and today it's kind of 50-50, and I think we definitely perform better when we're able to get more of the ball as Jeffcott's in, and it is now 2-0 Plymouth. I thought we'd survived it as Luke Jeffcott makes it Plymouth 2, Bolton 0, and we could be on for our fifth game without a victory and another defeat here, and we are starting to look a little bit sus, considering how strong of a lineup we've got. We can't rely on the excuse of, oh, well, we've got players rested and tired. Right now, that is just a very good ball and an excellent finish from Jeffcott. A little bit too dicey for my liking here, and they would deserve the win if they got it right now. We've got to be better. I might even be tempted to push it to an attacking mentality. I find that all that seems to do a lot of the time is make you shoot from further away, but I think we do need to be more attacking and more aggressive at this point. Sarsovic. Oh, great foot. Yes, it is a goal. What a lovely ball that is. I don't know who even played that pass, but Richards is able to get in there. Who was that? Was that Sarsovic? What a pick out. Richards is sort of peeling out from the outside here, and Sarsovic is just... First time in behind and Rodo Richards with a gorgeous... That's more like it from Richards. Right, okay. Half an hour to go. Let's pull this one back. Quirk's just dribbled past a couple of our players and has opened a big amount of space up here for Plymouth. Good ball in. Oh, so many tackles and so many blocks. Well done, lads. That could have well saved us the third goal. It's actually turned out to be quite an even game just out of this second half, but I just don't know if we're going to be able to fashion another great chance. Politic goes past one man, though. Edge of the box for Isgrove. Bit of space opening up for Lloyd Isgrove, and it's a good strike, but Cooper's there. Once again, picked up this time by Sarsovic. Isgrove into the box. He's going to shoot, isn't he? No! Cleared away. And once again, the pressure continues as Booty picks it up. Sarsovic round the side for Isgrove. On his saved. And Politic. And it's offside. Ah. Oh. It's not looking like it. I think we were a bit harshly done by the lose, but we didn't play well enough in the first half here. We've picked things up massively in the second half, but we're unable to find the finish. And it is Plymouth Argyle 2, Bolton Wanderers 1. Very, very even game. We were a lot better in that second period. That's where we really started to catch up. And I think had we scored the, the equaliser, it would have been justly deserved, but we just could not seem to find it. I mean, this is what it does to the league. We are only three points clear of Grimsby Town now. Seven points behind Ipswich. We need to make sure that we just qualify for the playoffs. We've been in there all season. I think that there's slightly more a good run of fixtures now for us should at least allow us to sort of stabilize. I hope. So, 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 so. I'm going to do a couple of games off camera. I'm going to come back for Coventry and Wickham because they're just around that sort of area. And obviously we need to do a little bit of a shorter one for the next one. We'll just sort of do them month by month. Obviously we'll bundle those into uh, two episodes rather than one, obviously. That's ridiculous. So, if you've enjoyed this episode, even though we've been on a really poor run, uh, we've actually not won a game in today's video. That might be the first time in this entire save. Drop a like. That'll be awesome. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. That'll be awesome as well. We are bound to have a bad patch at some point. I'm not particularly worried. I think we'll get back onto it, hopefully. So, yeah, uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new. I stream on Twitch Tuesday, Thursdays, and at the weekend. And obviously we have the second channel now too. So, yeah, that'll be awesome. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Hold your guns. Capybara. Bye-bye.